I, I mentioned at the beginning that uh, there is now an effort among some scientists to figure out how to erase traumatic memories. I mean, there are all kinds of interesting questions here, scientific questions, ethical questions as well. Uh, Joe, are, aren't our scientists going to be able to figure out how to do this, how to pinpoint specific memories and just wipe them out of someone's mind? Right. So, I mean, that's the kind of hype about, about this kind of work, but that's not really, I think, what's happening. Um, when we do these kinds of experiments, for example, in animals, we're focusing on brain systems that work implicitly or unconsciously, and I want to come back to that in a second. Um, and what they do is when they're active, they cause the body to respond, which then can create all sorts of other consequences in the brain and mind. So we're not look for in the case of fear, we're not really looking at fear in the animal. What we're looking at are fear responses or defense responses. And this is a kind of memory that has no conscious correlate. In a, a human that has damage to the amygdala, uh, the person can no longer be conditioned to have a bodily response to a tone that's been paired with a shock, but they still remember having been conditioned. Um, so it's not, this, the system is working beneath the surface. In fact, probably most of our memories are like that. The reason we have memory, again, is not, as Dan said, it's not to reminisce. Um, memory evolved as a mechanism for storing information about the past to predict behavior in the future, allow your behavior to be uh, more adaptive in the future. So it's about, you know, the original memories are going to be systems in very kind of primitive animals that allow them to adapt behaviorally to the environment, not to reminisce about the past when, when they experience the environment. Well, let, me, let me ask you a more pointed question. Suppose uh, a soldier comes back from the war in Afghanistan, has witnessed horrible things, uh, particularly maybe one particular incident that has haunted him, right. suffers from uh, post-traumatic stress. Right. Will scientists be able to uh, basically remove that trauma, at least no. to a large degree? What, what is likely to unfold over the next few years is the ability to weaken the implicit unconscious emotional impact of the memory, not the memory itself. Because the, the drugs that are available now and the methods that are available now are primarily affecting the amygdala-based memories rather than the hippocampal-based memories when you do these kinds of experiments. So you so take the emotion out of the memory. You, re you dampen the emotion so that the person is no longer overwhelmed when they relive, when they have the conscious reliving, which will then trigger all this emotional stuff. You dampen the ability of the brain to re-trigger that underneath stuff that uh, complicates life for them. Is it doesn't remove the memory. It simply kind of reduce, reduces the impact of it. Is anybody trying to figure out how to do that with the hippocampal episo episodic, is that right, um, right, memory? Yes, and I would say the, the evidence is, uh, I mean, there's some studies that, you know, if you target it for that, you can do it. Um, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be quite as robust as, as mm -hmm. the other stuff. And when this has been tried in humans, uh, the effect is that for example, just using a simple thing in healthy adults, college students, uh, where they see a, a stimulus that's paired with a shock, and then they're given a drug that blocks the restorage of the memory, um, the, um, uh, they still remember the experience again, but they just don't have the response. So the memory of the event is intact, right. but the associated memory, uh, the associated emotion is altered. Exactly. 